Here we go. What's going on, people? It's Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather, with another edition of Every Man's a Millionaire. What we're going to talk about today is how to start a bigger hustle. That's a thousand bucks a month or more. This is side money. We're going to talk about the rules, the execution of the game. If you know who I am, or is this your first time here? I'm Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we start businesses and hustles. We don't try to save money. We make money. Now, one little disclaimer here. If you're new to the channel, do not subscribe to the channel. Go below and get on the text notification list because YouTube picks and chooses who they're going to send their videos to. Because once again, until you get on my text notification list or you get on my email list, you're a YouTube subscriber. So with that, let's jump into it. Uh, the sound should be a lot better. This uh, new laptop is kind of crazy. Let's talk about the first thing that you need to do with starting your four-figure hustle. You need to have written goals. You need to have written goals. This is what kills most people. Most people just start doing something. They start making a little scratch. It looks good. It feels good. And then the minute it starts to become a responsibility or it becomes work, they like, I don't want to do this anymore because I want it to be easy. All right. No. So what I want you to do right now is take out a sheet of paper, your notebook, and write down my monthly hustle is going to make a thousand dollars or more, which we're going to break down to as 250 bucks per week. All right. I, I didn't go ahead and do the math on this. So what we got to do, it's like uh 250 divided by seven. So that's 35 bucks a day. Once again, your goal is to make 35 bucks a day. Your goal isn't to make a thousand dollars a month. It is to make 35 bucks a day. Then if you want to get down to, let's see, divided by four hours. Let's see, devote four hours to your hustle. So you need to make nine bucks an hour, seven days a week for four hours. So that's the kind of thing that you have to do to shape and structure your hustle. Now I get this question all the time. Hey, Glenn, what's the best hustle? Wrong, wrong, wrong fucking question. You need to do some research. You need to get your ass on Google and you need to find your way because let's say you live in New York and you need to get a hustle going on. New York, there's all types of fashion districts. There's all types of hustle. So if you're living in New York, you may have a totally different hustle than someone living in Mississippi. Uh, maybe someone in Mississippi has figured out that they got to hook up with corn. I'm just saying, I don't know if they go grow corn in Mississippi, but now you can get some ears of corn and go on the side of the road and sell that. Once again, your hustle is dependent upon you. It's dependent upon your environment and it's dependent upon your hustleability. So everybody's trying to do the same thing or quote, find the best hustle. They're trying to find the appropriate hustle translation. Hey, Glenda, I'm not really trying to work. I want something that's going to give me good money while I sit on my ass. Um, I don't have any of that for you, but I do have some techniques and strategies and some things you need to do so you can groom your hustle, so you can put your hustle together. So the first thing is the written goal. I'm going to make a thousand bucks a month. If you hadn't done that, do it already. Now that comes down to, I need to make $35 per day or more. Now, the second part of your hustle and the second part of your written instructions is I'm going to dedicate four to six hours per day, five or seven days per week on my hustle. See, this is what kills people. And I'm going to tell you right now, I can give you a free hustle that will work in most metropolitan areas. If you fucking sit on the free section of Craigslist and you go in there and you look every day. You're going to average out to a G or two G's per month just sitting on the free section and being first to respond. But here's the, the problem with that. 
when good stuff pops up on the free section, I'm going to give you the hours, early in the morning, late at night. You need to be on that. You need to contact the person that's like, look, I'm coming to get this right now. When people are giving away stuff for free, they want it gone. They don't want to say, hey, you know, it's Bundy. Will you hold it to me for me until I come and get it on Saturday? Because they know more than likely you're not even coming Saturday. You have every intention when you send that email or send that text or coming Saturday, but something's going to happen. You know why? Because you have no money invested. Oh, well. I don't have any money invested. I ain't losing anything. So you need to have a written commitment to yourself for your hustle. Now, the third thing you need to do, and this is going to be on the personal side, you need to straighten out your cash flow situation. If you don't have a budget, you need a budget. And you need the five checking accounts. Because if you don't have a budget, and if you don't have the five checking accounts, all new money is going to be absorbed by your budget. So you're really not going to be that much better off because you're going to find something to spend that money on. So instead of it being a hustle so you can come up, it's just going to be a situation where you're making more money and you're living above your means. So that's one of the things you, you just can't do. Now, let's get into what could you do? You could do Craigslist, you can do eBay, you can do Amazon, you can do OfferUp, you can do Facebook. You can do thrift stores. Now, part of a hustle is it's not going to be your main thing. So don't worry about what it is. This is, quote, a hustle. It does, you don't have to like it. You don't have to spend all, you know, it could be something you literally hate. But if you can make a G or more a month, do that. Now, your hustle is going to be very different than your business. Your business is going to be something that you've researched. You know the marketplace. You know who's in the marketplace. You know what they want. And then you're going to build an organization to serve this marketplace. A hustle, you just have to be active. And you just have to go on Craigslist, look in the free section, because Craigslist already has the audience. You could buy, find some in the free section and then flip it. I recently gave away, well, yeah, about a month ago, I gave away a table. I could have easily got uh, $250 for it. And let, let's talk about that, too. You, you're going to call me an elitist bastard, but I don't give a fuck. It is not worth my time to put something on Craigslist where I can get $250 when I can send out an email and get five Gs. It doesn't make any sense. And I've seen this matriculation in myself that I still could hustle. But when you look at the opportunity cost, I got to list it on Craigslist. I got to meet people. I got to haggle with people when I can just send an email and get money. So for where I'm at, and we're going to talk about this because uh, one of the things that is problematic, and you can unsubscribe from the channel if you want to. I really don't care. You ain't on my level. And what I mean by that is you would not go to Bill Gates and try to do Bill Gates stuff. You wouldn't go to Steve Jobs and try to do Steve Jobs stuff. You wouldn't even go to a McDonald owner's franchisee trying to do McDonald's stuff because, you know, I'm cool and I answer your questions and stuff. Y'all think y'all the same as me. No, you, you need to respect the 18 year hustle. And that's one of the things a lot of you don't because I'm. Let me just tell you something. If you're one of my Facebook friends and you want to get into one of these, well, my dick's bigger than yours, I'm just going to delete and block you after I clown you. Because there's been a lot of that from people who claim they've had businesses and be making all this money. And I go into Google, I can't find nothing about them. And I'm serious. You Nothing. Not even a high school classmate, polo, nothing. So all of these people are posturing because they want to look good but they don't want to actually do the work to be good. So when I talk about stuff I'm doing and I need to be real careful and I need to break it down, this is what I'm doing at my level. It doesn't make sense for me to do Craigslist. It doesn't make sense for me to do Amazon. It doesn't make sense for me to do eBay because I have a functional business. Now, at one point, I did not. When I was in the storage auction business, I was a self-employed person. And that's another hustle you can do. You can do storage auctions. I didn't really have a business because I didn't go to the next level like I did with this. So 
take this information as I've done that, but I'm not currently doing it because, uh, you know, and I, I'll be real frank. If you need to see me up in storage auctions, you need to see me flipping Craigslist stuff, then probably you want to unsubscribe from this channel because I'm not doing that shit anymore. I don't have to. And if that's what you need to feel that you're getting accurate information, so be it. That's cool. Find someone else. Now, with that said, because <laughs> I have to be real clear with some motherfuckers because I got people clowning and they're spending time going back and forth on me with me on Facebook when they have no money in the bank account. That is crazy. And if you're a Facebook friend, I'm doing some very interesting stuff that I'll be talking about in salesmatic but that'll come later All right so take this information as this is something i used to do this is something i've helped people currently do so this you know once again i'm not doing any of this stuff i'm giving you the information so you can be successful because i'm on a different level and it's going to be hard for you to replicate what i am doing and a lot of people don't tell folks that they don't go like well i mean i've got hundreds of thousands of dollars into this and I've got thousands of hours. All right. So now we've got to get into the psychology of hustling. You need to have a different mentality. First of all, you got your written marching orders. I'm going to make a thousand bucks a month. I'm going to commit four to six hours per day. I need to make $35 per day, seven days a week or more. Now you need to wake up and say these words today. I'm going to have a successful hustle. Wake up every day. It's like my hustle is going to be good every day. You need to reprogram your mind for success because this is something that will happen to you. Have you ever lost something in your house? Maybe your car keys, maybe um, your phone. And in a panic, and all your adrenaline is running, you, and you say this mentally, I can't find it. You, you've done this before, right? And then someone has come in, it's like, hey, I'm looking for my keys, I'm looking for my phones, and they go, it's right in front of you. How many of you that's happened to? And I'm going to explain to you why that happens. The subconscious mind is easily programmable in heightened states. So if you're like really stressed out, are really excited, that is a elevated programming mechanism to the subconscious mind. So you literally say, I can't find my phone. And it can literally be right in front of you and you will not see it. So going back to the programming of your subconscious mind, you need to wake up. I'm going to have a good hustle. My hustle is going to work out. And in the first few days, it may not, but you're going to keep programming yourself because you are programming yourself for success. And you got to eradicate a lot of this negative stuff. Like, also, don't tell your friends and family what you're doing. Don't tell them. If you use Facebook or you use, because I'm going to get into some of the stuff we're going to talk about. Just say, you know, you're trying to make some extra scratch. Don't even get into the details. Don't even go like, hey, you know, I'm listening to this guy on YouTube. And he said, I can make a thousand bucks a month. They're going to start like, really? You think you can do that? You? I don't think you can do it. And then they're going to start this negativity that's going to get in your subconscious mind. That's going to start fucking you up. Now, once you do this, you're going to have to use willpower to make it a habit. Because it's going to be strange. It's going to feel weird. It's going to feel crazy because. But if you keep this up for a month, I guarantee you, you're going to make money. Now, the first month, you may not make a thousand. You may make three hundred. Um, you might make 500, but the thing is success builds upon itself. So let's say it takes you six months to get to that G a month. That ain't bad. So one of the things you have to understand is that you're doing something new. This ain't normal. So if you don't get it right immediately, just say, you know what? I haven't learned what I need to learn to do this successfully. Don't like, I suck. Don't say this negative stuff. And for those of you who have these negative screen names, you need to change them. Uh, I'll talk about that in another video. But one of the things that you have to understand is just a few simple habit tweaks. You can become tremendously successful. Now, once you get this going, you got to work real hard to not fall into your bad habits. 
your bad habits, like, okay, um, I have a friend, really smart, hardworking, and every time she got some money, she had it, it, it was instantly gone. And this chick made 100K plus. And I was like, why are you like that? And she's like, what do you mean? It's like every time you get some money, it's like it's burning a hole in your pocket. Why don't you stack some cash? And, you know, getting into it, she got some bad money management habits from her parents. That's how they family did it. So you're going to have to work really hard to not be you. Because once you start doing this, and I've talked about this before in, in Facebook group, there's a video that is relatively recent. And most single people earn twenty seven to thirty two thousand dollars a year, literally across the country. So if you make let's say you make twenty seven K and it takes you six months to get to that thousand. So you've probably let's say the six months you collectively made three thousand. So end of the year, you've made nine thousand dollars. You've given yourself a 30 something percent pay raise. Now, also, we're going to talk about making money off of the books. This is something that we're going to have some strategies and techniques and methodologies on because you're going to be busting your ass and you need a runway where you can stack as much cash. So we're going to talk about how to do that where you don't get in trouble. So that's going to be another thing. So. Part of this is you making some readjustments in the things that you're doing. So once you get into your thousand bucks, then you need to write a new goal. It's like once you are doing a thousand bucks for a month or two, you immediately say, like, I need to make 1500 per month. And then once you start accomplishing that with consistency, then you're like, I need to make two thousand dollars per month and at this point the rules of the game are going to change a little bit uh you're going to have to start paying taxes and stuff unless you have a cash hustle if you have a cash hustle we'll tell you how to treat that how to do that how to do things that you need to do so you don't get in trouble and then once you get to two thousand and this could take you a few years let's be honest uh, everyone is not going to have the same results. Everyone's not going to arrive in the same juncture at the same time. But let's say you start the day and three years later, you're making an additional $3,000 a month. You still have your job. Let's be 100% clear about that. We don't quit jobs until the job is interfering with the business. So now you're making like 32, but now you're making 36 from your hustle. You've got money. All of the time, you've paid off bills, you've got access. Like, you know, if something bad happens, you're like, okay, go to the bank and pull out the money and pay your bill. You're no longer living in the stressful state that many Americans are living. You have essentially ascended to a position that 75% of Americans don't occupy. And that's just an extra three G's a year. I mean, a three grand a month and keeping your job. You're doing better than 75% of Americans just doing that. So do not look at what you're doing as, oh, it's just $3,000 a month. Huggy, sh sh uh, hustler, shaggy Z, he's doing like 300K a month. Let me tell you something. And there are people doing 300K a month. I'm not one of them yet, but that's my intention. Uh, my intention is to be doing a million a month, and it's probably going to take me three to four years, if not longer. And just being real, but you'll look at this person who may be lying and you'll start to feel some kind of way about yourself. It's like, well, you're making 300,000, only making three. Then you'll start feeling bad and like despondent. Like, yo, trust me, you're doing good work. You are changing your family tree. One of the reasons that I come down so hard on hustler porn is it programs people to think that their remarkable accomplishments are not really remarkable. If you just have a high school diploma and you got a job making 27 to 32 and you got a side hustle making 3K a month, you've done something with your life. You have moved to cheese. You've, you're setting yourself up in a position to later on become wealthy. 
And once again, you don't have to be a millionaire to be wealthy. I'm going to say this three times. You do not have to be a millionaire to be wealthy. You do not have to be a millionaire to be wealthy. And I'm going to do a video exposing, quote, paper millionaires versus business millionaires. We Of the 11 million millionaires in America, about 10 million of them are paper millionaires. They don't have a million dollars cash in the bank. Collectively, including their home, stock market, retirement funds, and a little cash and insurance, that puts them at a million. But if they had to raise cash, they might be able to raise 50 to 100K. So once again, if you were in the position where you could raise 50 to 100K and have no debt, you're actually in a better situation than someone who has a million dollars on paper. A lot of folks don't have cash. I'm going to tell you a little story. Don't get jelly. I was working hard. Me and my partner, we had some killer units. We had some killer months. eBay was popping. Amazon was popping. And one day, looked in the bank. We had 1.2 million bucks in the bank. You know what happened the next day? I woke up and went back to fucking work. There was no parties. There was no whistles. It was like, oh, you know what got me was my banker started treating me differently. And then I get a call from wealth management. That's what started to happen. And then I started getting all of these offers from this bank that we had the money in. And the money did not stay in there long. I'm going to be real with you. I had some stuff I had to pay off. But it was amazing what happened. And I talked to the banker and she says, one million dollar depositor, just one, can make or break a branch. That's how fucking rare it is to have a million dollars cash. It is not a normal event. So all of these folks who are saying, I'm making all this money, and some are. You know the folks who are making the money? You don't really know about them. You don't even know who, who they are. You don't even know where to look for them. Because, you know, they're working every day. They ain't on social media. They ain't on Facebook. I was in a group, and this lady, her first name was Mary, and she said if you wanted to talk to millionaires, you had to go to events because they were not on Facebook. Message. All right. So let's see what, what we got going on in here. All righty. Oh, man, we got some stuff going on. What's up, Venturous One? Dre the Dream, what's going on? Josh Barr, thanks for the $5 super chat. How much money should a, should a side hustle make before considering making a business? Good question. First of all, depending upon how you create your side hustle, you may not be able to turn that into a business. So let's go into the future. Right now, you're broke dick Danny, and we're going to fast forward three years in the future. You have no debt, and you got about 50K in the bank. Once again, don't quit your job. So one of the things is what you're going to do is you're going to test your business model before you even put any money in it. Because, see, if it's not going to work on a small scale, it's definitely not going to work on a large scale. And since you're in Hustlers Undergrad, we'll be talking about that stuff. you got to be kidding. It's... <laughs> Alrighty then. I thought I had set that up. New Juru Girl, thanks for the $10 Super Chat. What's up, Ricky? Appreciate that. Cam Cam, Derek. Andrea, what's up, Nicholas? Thanks for the dollar super chat. Some hustlers in New York sell stuff that fell off the truck. Ganja 88, they do. Nicholas Parkinson. Hey, uncle, is Uber a hustle or building something from scratch like a website? Uber is a hustle. What's up, Edward Anderson? Darnell Marion. Well, Adonis Fuse. That's a good one. Mission Enemy Troops Terran. <laughs> Dre the Dream. Hoorah. What's up, Health Wealth and Real Talk? Thank you, Michael Weston. Ventures One. No, they should all be at the same bank. What's up, Gerald? You got to have the right man mindset. What's up, Derek Bailey? 
Um, the journey is important, but getting stuff because uh, recently I saw a video from Gary V talking about a two hundred million dollar company. He's not taking a lot of money out, and I felt some kind of way about that because let's say you're making two hundred million a year, and you took out. Let's see. I got to put all this in there. I got to make sure I get all these zeros. All right. And you took out minus 1.5. Whoa. I got to do this again. My fingers are moving too quick. Here we go. Minus 98.5. <laughs> all right. I'm excited. That's why I keep messing up. All right. Minus 98.5%. So it's like 2 million. 2 million, yeah, like 2.3 million. So in New York, that's a good life. Now, so if you, let's see, let's say 200 million. Oh, minus. 98%, 4 million. All right, so if he took out 2%, that's 4 million a year, plus all the speaking and stuff. Um, That really buys a lot of nice stuff. So he could live really well and not bankrupt the company by just taking out 2% or 3%. They ain't really going to change the trajectory of the company at all. And... I think that so many people are caught up in the uh, the glorification of hustling and being an entrepreneur that, I mean, I take out 5%. So I think that's unattainable because you got to look at something else too. And he has the company, but he could probably live quite well because I think it's like 100K to speak. And he does like four speeches a month. That's a few million right there. Then book sale royalties. So even without the company, he's probably at six or seven million a year. And I, I'm beginning to think that Gary understates his position. I think Gary doesn't tell all because he knows that his crowd buys into, you know, Gary's just like us. Gary's struggling out here. He's making money. He's making. And I, I, I don't think it's in a nefarious sense, but. It, it don't add up because he can easily pull out that kind of money and not mess up the company at all. Uh, some entrepreneurs bankrupt their company. There's some people, if they were making 200 a year, they'd be taking out 50, 60 million a year, uh, be paying crazy taxes. So I get that. But I, I, I think there's more to the story. What's up, Mr. Spike? Appreciate the $5 super chat. <laughs> levels meek meals i never heard that but i man to listen to it venture one glenn you graduate to the levels who graduates then goes back to sit at a lower class desk so they can share information uh very interesting question and i agree with you i did a poll like uh, i'm doing some new stuff on my facebook page and i asked people if they want a million dollars what would they do with it? And taxes were paid. And it was really interesting information. And also the day before I asked how many people who were against abortion. And the reason I was, because, you know, I'm about to get a little political, but I'm not going to go too deep. I was sitting there wondering how a Brett Kavanaugh can ascend to the Supreme Court. And I'm a realist and I deal with truth. And I started to say, okay, you're looking at this thing wrong. The guy has lied to Congress. He's done all this stuff, but people really don't seem to care. So if, you know, honestly, a lot of people don't care. Even if he did attempt to rape this girl, they're like, she didn't get raped. So what? I was like, what is the larger picture here? Because he will get on the bench and they will dismantle abortion and uh, Roe versus Wade. They will. And I, I poll people and I saw a new truth. Yes, Trump is a deplorable dirtbag, but 
Trump is actually keeping his campaign promises. I want you to really think about that. How many politicians have, now I'm still thinking Trump's going to get impeached. Don't get it twisted. But he's keeping his campaign promises to a group of people who have been lied to by politicians for decades. Even though he's Trump, they're like, I can deal with it because he's keeping his promises. And once people realize that this stuff is not, because the reason it got voted was, you know, during the Obama economy, which hadn't really changed that much under the Trump economy, is they thought things were so bad and they had lost privileges and they had lost rights. And when they wake up and realize that even with him keeping his campaign promises, it's still not going to get any beggar, better. And I think that's when the lights are going to go off. But until then, they're going full tilt. And I really looked at it objectively and I was like, ah, oh, that's what's going on. Like him or hate him, he's keeping most of his campaign promises and to a large group of people, getting a conservative majority is super important. It ain't really going to change your day-to-day -day life, but that's what's going on. So I had to look at that. And the thing with Gary is people, I, I'm going to do the video. Uh, it's going to take me some time because I'm finally clearing my desk, but I live in a neighborhood with multimillionaires and I'm telling you the people who are past that million dollars on paper, they don't live like the millionaire next door. They don't. Uh, you'll have a few people who are worth millions. They'll live in a town and they'll be the richest person. You'll have that. But collectively people who are making five, you know, in the five to $10 million range, they ain't doing that. <laughs> But once again, it ain't really that many, many of them. It's just not. Uh, literally, out of the 11 million people, there's about a million who have five or six or 10 million or more. And then when you raise it up to 15, we're talking about 300, 400,000 individuals in the world, not just the United States, in the world. And, you know, you hear this thing that China's creating new millionaires every day. There probably are, but they're like, Collectively, they have a million point, 1.2, 1 1.5 million. But the ballers, they have yachts and planes. That's a whole different level. So he's Gary, like Trump, is a great salesperson. So when you look at Gary Vee, you have to go down and give respect to Gary has amazing sales skills. Trump has amazing skills, sales skills, except Gary's a better manager a much, much better manager. And that's what you, you see the difference of. What's up, Zola? Happened to me? Yeah, because see, when you tell your subconscious mind you can't see something, your subconscious mind will program your eyes not to see it, even if it's in front of your face. So this is why you got to get into positive reprogramming of yourself. All right, Anthony. All right, I'm just rolling through these comments real quick. All right, what's up, DC? Appliances repair. Mentor Shelly, what's up? Andrew Williams, your profile name draws energy, good or bad, depending on the name. Absolutely. And it's very insidious if you got a jack of uh, screen name. Michael Weston, uh, I tried asking the other day. I make 7,500K a year with 40K in savings account. I'm selling my current car and getting a new one for 35K. Should I pay cash or finance it? Uh, what are your goals in life? What are your goals? You see, this is how you should approach that question. What are you getting a new car for? Is it just something to drive? You make you feel good? Because you're in that bucket where you could get a new car, but should you? I, I, once again, is what is your purpose? What is your intentions? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to start? What's up, Mo Grizzly? <laughs> oh, vision boards. Those are cool. I like vision videos. What's up, Loring? 
You know, this is weird because, oh, you know what? I know what I did. This should bring me back to normal. I did a test and I left it up high. Uh, let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Lord, that junk. Dang. Uh, health, wealth, and real talk. So many of us screw ourselves out of a better life because we spend too much time comparing ourselves to the guy, gal who may or may not have what they brag about. This would be true. Good for you, Conscious University. Thank you, JP. Yeah, you got to be careful with that Facebook app. It, it's just a huge time suck. Sorry to hear that, Edmund Scott. Wow, side of men. Oh, if you were. Yeah, you might get fired showing them my videos. Be careful about that. Pretty much connections. Family will do you in quicker than anyone else. Edmund Scott, how do I establish my t-shirt business as a main source of income? Two words, systems and processes. Oh, determined soul, this is a good question. What are your thoughts on a job offering overtime versus spending those hours working on your hustle or business? Good question. Let me move this back a little bit. What you should do is sit down with yourself and number one, write out what kind of life you want to have. Because this is what many people do because, and I understand why, it really isn't your fault. Your parents didn't know, no one taught them. So we create these situations where people are living in a lack environment. No one ever said to you, hey, what kind of life do you want to live? It's like, fuck that, man. I need to get some money because I got bills to pay. So you get caught in this trap. Write down what kind of life you want. And whatever it is, if you want to live in a million dollar neighborhood, write that shit down and then figure out what you need to do to get there. But without having a roadmap or even some destination point, you're just going to be hustling to be hustling and that's going to get tired and it's going to get weary and that's going to break you down. So if you have a job that offers you overtime and you have no vision for your life, okay, take it. But if you got a vision for your life, you might be better off taking a job as a security guard, getting a roommate or two, and having enough disposable income to fund the growth of your hustle or business. Uh, Dre the Dream, if you're in school and, you know, it ain't breaking you off, you just finish it. Because if you don't finish it, it's going to fuck with you. Adonis, also remember the recent tax cuts. Actually, they voted the other day to make those tax cuts permanent for corporations. I don't know, but Google that. Cam Cam, Gary focuses on his brand image. He's not going to tell you the full story. I agree. What's up, Lamote? <laughs> oh, man. I thought I had fixed that. Renzo Davis, I would buy a parking lot by New Los Angeles Stadium. That parking business is good money, man. Nicholas Parson, true Uncle G, no hate, but didn't his father have a three million company and he turned it into 60 million sales? Not zero to 60. Oh, uh, no, no, I've said the same thing. And guess what Gary was a part of? Gary, once again, like Trump, downplays it was just a small $3 million business, right? <laughs> If you adjust it for inflation, that was like a $10 million business. So Gary grew up as part of the 9.9%. $3 million business. Gary was the child of this person who had this $3 million. Gary grew up upper middle class. You see, you know, people don't pick up on that because they, because Gary's really good at making you feel like he's just like you. Once again, he's an excellent salesman.
And if you have a right, the Supreme Court seat is extremely important, even means sacrificing Congress. The tax cut service golden parachutes for politicians will be voted out. There you go. Jigga. 1017 saw a video where Greg Cardone said that most millionaires cannot withstand a lawsuit. I would agree with that 100%. Uh, when I was doing the art of holding, this is the stuff because most people, the stuff you guys have gotten and getting in the art of holding, there's a lot of business owners worth 10 million who have not set their company up like that. And if they get sued and they had sloppy accounting and sloppy attorney, their whole family fortune is left wide open. So I agree 100% with Grant. Just my cash out. What do you suggest if you're starting completely over? What do you mean? I need context. Are you completely broke? I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can be there. Nope. This is wild. Should be smoother. What's up, Logic Supreme? Thanks for the $5 super chat. Visit George, and I really like Dunwoody and Alpharetta as far as homes go. Yeah, that's that north side triangle, man. Uh, Fit Demon 100. What's your opinion about money gurus suggest using credit as checking account to pay down debt and build credit for a business? I think they're full of shit. All right, here's the real deal. If you got to do all of these shenanigans, to really get some money, you don't understand money. First thing you should do, and one of the best things you do for yourself is get you and your family out of debt. Number two, get yourself on a budget. Number three, figure out a way to make way more money than you're making now. Um, that's a lot of that shit's probably going to be illegal. Some of it's probably structuring. I don't know. I've not watched it, but there's other ways you can do it if you're actually really making money. If you're really making money, you don't have to do this shit. And let me define what money is. If you have a job, let's say you're making 27K and your hustle makes you 30K. And you got a good budget, you got a good sense of yourself, and you're not loaded down with debt, you don't have to do that bullshit. <laughs> you just don't. What's up, Roadrunner? Uh, LS Cherry, when are you doing a video on cash hustles the safe way? This will be part of New course. I'll talk about that later. That is wild because, uh, well, we'll see. All right, hold on. We jumped. Do you think NLP neuro linguistic program is too much of an extreme technique? For no, no. If you can do it, do it. Uh, Marquise Barton, hey, Glenn, should you pay off consumer debt if you got a small hands of 5 to 10K? Once again, it depends. It depends on your situation. If that's all the money you got in the world, no. Kaching, what's up from Jamaica? Josh Barr, I love this. People want to be like Gary Vee and Grant Condone until it's time to work 18 hours a day. That is the truth. Country's University, I know a guy who started a carpet cleaning company. It's making 5K per month. He had in washing animals and his business took off. That's a whole new segment right there, man. Just my cash out. Yes, no job. Just my cash out. You need to sit your ass on Craigslist in the free section and be like a vulture. You need to live on that shit for 24 hours a day. Go get some stuff. Sell it until you get some money. What's up, Jabras? This is funny. Uh, I'm going to keep the volume like this because now it's Darth Vader-ish. Now it's too low. Well, we let's see. Where am I with this? Yeah, we're good. All right, so <laughs> what's up, man, from Mobile? All right, let me do this. Let me get in here. Okay. 
So we're going to go from low to high. Sent to everyone. All right, these links are below. For those of you who want Game 105, we're going to get in that mental training in Game 105. And you can watch some other videos and read about it. Well, actually, I can uh, do this. Let's go into here. Here we go. No, I don't want that. I want to see. I thought I had set this up correctly. Here we go. All right, so this is what's in game 105. The ultimate uh, talk dirty to me. The first steps become an alpha male. And <laughs> all righty. Good Lord. Okay, here we go. Let's go back. This sucker is so sensitive. There we go. So this is what's going to be in game 105. It's 49 bucks a month for 20 months, then you're done. Then we're going to get into <clears throat> what we're going to have in Hustle Undergrad starting tomorrow. We're going to have Salesmatic. Now, Salesmatic is going to be creating sales processes. And what is a sales process? A sales process is <clears throat> one, finding out who your audience is. Uh, everyone talks about products, products, products. You should look at people, people, people. You should look at what people are buying. You should look at your market. You should see if your market's growing, if your market's drinking. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about audience. And then we're going to get into marketing and then we're going to get into sales processes. So it's like three big buckets of information to help. And this is going to be for your long-term business. This will not be for your hustle. Will not be for your hustle. Because we're going to be doing this, how to build a four-figure hustle. There's nothing in here yet, but there will be tomorrow. How to build a four-figure hustle, cash management for your hustle, putting your hustle in a container. Craigslist offer up. I'm going to give you some techniques to make that stuff pop. Why you need to build an email list or text notification list for your hustle. How to use Facebook to hustle. Facebook is a different animal, but unto itself, how to make a thousand bucks off the books, not selling books, but a thousand bucks cash that you don't pay taxes on. Uh, and hustle case studies. So this is what's going to be going down. All of the links and stuff are below the video. And I just try to activate something. I'm not going to hit save. But this is what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to have three classes in Hustler, disruptivemail.org. And we're going to have two classes in Hustler Undergrad. So you can buy a class or you can go ahead and get everything. All right. Links are below the video. And make sure. Yeah. Um, once again, what I'm finding to be very effective now is just to put the link under the video. <laughs> so the link is down there. Uh, give me 24 hours to add you in. And we'll be talking more about this because I'm going to like get rolling really hard tomorrow. Next week, I'll be out of town, but I'll still be doing content and maybe doing content. It just depends because I'm going to be in a different time zone. But one of the things that is going to happen is because this was part of the first part of Hustle Undergrad, except I had to get down the legal structure for those of you who are building business because it's going to take so long to build your business and I want you guys to build it right and now we're going to get into the hustles and it's not going to be anything you've seen on YouTube it's not going to be any content off the internet because part of the reason that so many hustles fail is people don't properly prepare you you got to treat your hustle like a, a job you just can't like hey I'm, I'm hustling and I'm good. No, no. You, 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 we got to get into some methodology. We got to get into some mindsets. So.
let's see, Thriller Alley. If you have your own personal cars and houses listed in separate LLCs, uh, you're going to have to get in the art of holding. Thriller AL, you're going to have to get in the art of holding. I don't know any, I don't know anything about cannabis. I know it is, I've heard, I should say, I heard it's a growth industry. There's like some 60 year old lady making millions. If that's what you want to do, do it. Cause I know nothing about the weed business. And one of the things that I don't do is talk about stuff. I don't really know about, I don't know nothing about weed and uh, someone wanted me to do like an investment. I don't have any money in the market right now. I have not a dime in the market. I don't have a Roth. I don't have a 401k. I got a lot of cash that I need to do some with, but um, I'm not a traditional investor. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that starting a business, manage your money correctly. is going to get you into a greater position than sitting back and trying to save money. Cause if you have someone who's already making like an extremely high income and they're investing, they're going to see gains instantly. But if you're making like regular income of 27 to 50 K, you're going to have to invest consistently, wisely and judiciously for 20 to 30 years, unless you're trading where you, you know, if you're real, if you're good enough to be a trader, you can start making money today, but that's a skill set that most people just don't have. All right. So anyone that wants to get into any of these, and I'm going to do a video talking about each one. I just lumped it up there together because I'm going to be selling these courses at the prices that they are this month. And then the prices go up. Dre the dream. Do you think that businesses on levels are comprised of the owner who has an ideal, the manager, the orchestrate and the technician is pretty much the worker. Not today. Mm -mm. The new business models are way different than that way different than that because here's a little secret if you have a worker bee who's good enough to make you a lot of money sooner or later they're gonna realize that they can do the same thing and make themselves a lot of money everybody's trying to be the boss but everyone don't have the skills for that so that is one of the things all right so once again links below pick what you want or you can go ahead and get the full deal of Hustle Undergrad because I can tell you right now, there's going to be more after we do Salesmatic, after we do the four hustles, we're going to get into some more training and I'll be making it available, but your best deal I'm going to tell you is to get into the full boat Hustle Undergrad, which includes game 105. Once again, if you sign up tonight, give me a few hours to get you set up. I'll send you a welcome email. I'll show you links so you can bookmark what you need to bookmark, give you website things. Oh, yeah, we, we got this tight. And then we can rock and roll tomorrow night. Now, if you buy like tomorrow after four, more than likely you will miss the live webinar because that's going to be my cutoff point because I got to get ready for the webinar and I got to figure out this thing because I thought that I had figured it out where this audio wouldn't be like Darth Vader. And apparently I didn't. So I'll play around with that. Uh, no, I'm not playing. Mm -mm, nope. I'm not playing any discounts. And I'm going to tell you why. Hustle undergrad, the way it is now is 300 bucks per month. So that's nine G's over yeah 30 months. If you go through the four hustle thing alone and your first year you make 12, you're $3,000 up. Then your next year you make 20. Then you're $23,000 up. And the next year you make 30. Then you're up 50. So, uh, -uh I'm not discounting shit because once again, I have a very giving heart and I've done that. And I'm going to tell you, I actually gave a lot of these courses away for six months. You know what happened? People didn't open them up because they had no commitment. They had no skin in the game. And since I started charging people a lot of money, and I know it's a lot of money, oh, man, folks all up in the courses all of a sudden. They're like, yo, 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 yo. So, no, I ain't, I ain't giving no fucking discounts. Nope. If you want to get in, you need to get in now. 
because once I get to the secret stuff, well, not the secret stuff, I'm going to do some more training. And everyone that bought Hustler Undergrad, and there's some folks who got it in $99, they're like blown away. And then after I come back from my business meeting, I'm going to start launching the T-shirts and the gear because I wanted to launch it when it got cold. So that's going to go down. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to go down. And I'm not trying to like, you know, shout you down, but I'm tired of motherfuckers asking me for discounts when the shit's already underpriced for what you get. Because you go through Hustle Undergrad and you spend your nine G's. This is going to benefit you for the rest of your fucking life. The rest of your fucking life. Think about that. All right. Be sure to get on the text notification list. Uh, a lot of stuff is going to be coming down this week, so you don't want to miss it. So, all right. That's wow. That's wow. All right. So I will see you guys probably tomorrow. And in the morning, I'm thinking I'm going to do disruptive mail. I got a topic on my mind, so we will see. And then I'm going to play around with this thing because I think I know where I went wrong is I had the volume turned up too loud. All right, y'all be good. Be sure to get into whatever course you want to. The pricing is going to stay the same for this month. I'm not going to like change it. So you got literally 30 days to get in. And after that, the price starts jumping. All right. Um, right. I'll see you guys later. I'll answer some more questions tomorrow.